Joining us now, live from Newsmax, New York, to discuss what has transpired in Israel is David Rubin. David, we should point out you're the former mayor of Shiloh. Uh, you're also the Israel blocker for Israel National News, the founder and the president of Shiloh Israel's Children's Fund, and the author of Peace for Peace and the Islamic Tsunami. You've written a lot about this. I'd like to get your take on what is transpiring right now in Israel. Well, Israel has been transfixed for the past 20 days uh, on the kidnapping of three teenage boys uh, who were standing at a bus stop and they were kidnapped by Hamas terrorists. And by the way, we have unequivocal proof that, that they were kidnapped by Hamas terrorists. They were murdered shortly thereafter. And uh, for about 18 days, the country was transfixed with trying to find them and uh, the whole country was mobilized to find these three te teenage boys that were kidnapped by Hamas terrorists, who, I should point out, are in unity government with the Palestinian Authority of Mahmoud Abbas and his Fatah terrorist organization. So we're talking about terrorist organizations in Israel, uh, Fatah and Hamas, that have committed countless terrorist attacks against children in Israel, in fact, my three-year-old son and I were wounded by Fatah terrorists of Mahmoud, Mahmoud Abbas's Fatah organization. So let's be very clear about this. We're talking about Islamic terrorist organizations that are based in Israel and acting against Israel. Uh, you just mentioned something, David, that, that I'd like you to tell us a little more about. You say that you and your son were wounded by one of these organizations. W when did this happen? Can you give us more details in coming out of that type of attack? Yes, this old son and I were coming back from Jerusalem in my car, uh, going back to our home in uh, going back to our home in Shiloh, uh, up in Samaria, which is the northern part of what uh, the world mistakenly calls the West Bank. And we, we, we're halfway home. The car was ambushed by Islamic terrorists. I was shot in the leg. My son was shot in the head, and thank God the bullet missed his brain stem by one millimeter. But uh, out of the result, the result of that attack, thank God, was that we survived, and I started the Shiloh Israel Children's Fund for the purpose of healing the trauma of the terror victim children in Israel. But w we are only two individuals out of many thousands of Israelis that have been wounded or killed by Islamic terrorists, and usually that emanates from the Palestinian Authority, from the Hamas terrorist organization, or the Fatah terrorist organization, or the Islamic Jihad. Well, that Mr. is what Israel is going through, and you know, we're just ordinary people trying to live our lives. Well, sadly, Mr. Rubin, a lot of us here in America don't realize how much this is a part of every Israeli every Israeli's life on a day-to-day -day basis. But I wanted to get your reaction to a quote from the State Department and a spokeswoman Jen Psaki yesterday talking about Hamas's relation to the Mahmoud Abbas government, saying they're not a part of the technocratic government. Obviously, the technocratic government is different from the reconciliation pro process. Obviously, everything is linked different. They're not a part of the technocratic government. That's the official line coming from the State Department. I want to get your reaction. That's the official double talk coming out of the State Department. Uh, for the 20 plus days that, that these boys were in captivity, and uh, we didn't know that they were murdered, uh, those three teenage days, we did not hear one peep out of President Obama uh, sh showing, his uh, sh showing his concern for t teenage boys that had been kidnapped and that had never, never done anything to hurt a fly. Uh, I wonder with many comments emanating out of the State Department since President Obama was elected. I, I, I think the, the lesson to be learned here is that Israel is going to have to stand on its own two feet and, and we're going to have to defend ourselves. And I, I wish that the American president was more supportive. I wish that his State Department was more supportive of Israel and would know how to stand with his friends and with uh, America's allies. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case. David, from things presidential to things personal, you, you just gave us a gripping personal account of what happened to you and your then three-year-old son 12 years ago. And when we heard that, when I heard you say your son was shot in the head, I just recoiled. Uh, thankfully, as you mentioned, it 
miss the brainstem, but but I, I mention that again because of the personal investment, the frustration that many must feel. And then you get the report yesterday of uh, the slaying of, you get a reaction from the White House about this condemnation of the situation. I just have to ask you know, the situation, I just have to ask you, uh, given the fact you live da daily in Israel, do you believe this was Israeli vigilanteism, or what do you think happened in the case of the Arab teenagers? Well, I have to tell you, unfortunately, we've been in this movie before, and it's not a good one. Uh, the, the bottom line is that whenever something like this happens, where, where the Arab terrorists commit a terrorist attack against Israeli civilians, which, as you know, happens quite often, and when the media starts talking about it, before you know it, uh, the Arabs are, are pulling up some teenager or some child that, that they claim has been wounded or killed by an Israeli. And then what we find out afterwards is that it was all fabricated. Uh, this is something that's done very well in the Arab world. It's, uh, you know, it's a big part of the Arab Spring, the so-called Arab Spring, which really is a movement of uh, revolutions and overthrows and, and Islamic fundamentalism. Uh, I don't believe it for a minute. Uh, Israelis don't do that. Jews do not kidnap peop children and, and uh, teenagers and, and murder them. It's, it's just not something that's done. And you will find out within a few weeks, you'll see it on the back pages of the New York Times that there was a mistake, uh, but they will have already put in the headline. So just to amplify this, you believe these reports of, of an Arab boy being slain, you believe this is a fabrication? Absolutely. I have absolutely no doubt about that. And as I said, you, you may see it on the back pages of the newspaper, uh, but, but they will have gotten the headline already because the media loves to tap into it, as does the State Department, as you saw. Well, Mr. Rubin, do you see this increasing, the tension here increasing, or do you think this will slowly died down is this are we at a real flashpoint right now in this crisis uh, there's no there's no question about it uh, ever since the Hamas and Fatah joined in their unity government in the Palestinian Authority uh, we we see the direction that it's going in uh, unfortunately we're, we're we're heading towards war and it's, it's just going to get worse and worse uh, I, I have to point out that Israel was warning for a long time that if terrorists joined together, uh, that it is going to bring things to a head and it's not going to be positive for any sort of peace process that they may want to have. Uh, I, I have to tell you quite, quite point. I have to tell you quite, quite pointedly, the Palestinian Authority has been the, the main sponsor of terrorism. The Palestinian Authority of Mahmoud Abbas pay salaries to the terrorists and every single terrorist whether it's from Islamic Jihad or Hamas or Fatah or even Al Qaeda they receive a salary from the Palestinian Authority this is all documented very clearly in my book Peace for Peace Israel in the New Middle East and I th think it's time that we pay a little bit of attention to that 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 if the Palestinian Authority is financing terrorism and paying the salaries of these terrorists then they don't have a right to exist in the free world and they don't have to have a right to exist in civilized society. Well, David, you just mentioned something else a second ago that just, again, <clears throat> gripped my attention. You said, quoting you back now, we are headed for war. So you've got this with, with the terrorists going on, but there's also real concern looking beyond the, the border of Israel to Iran and Iran's continued work to develop nuclear weapons. Can the Israeli nation really afford right now to get into a pitch conflict with the terror groups in the area you say is incorrectly referred to as the West Bank with the looming threat of Iranian nuclear capabilities? Well, we're talking about two different fronts. Uh, we're talking about Iran, we're talking about the terrorist organizations. I have to tell you what, what I think uh, which is that Iran is going to require uh, the launching of a, a very lightning fast nuclear strike on several fronts. Uh, the, it's going to be mostly from the air and that, that's what's going to be needed to stop the Iranian nuclear race. So David, in your uh, they, opinion, they are, 
you are you are saying you expect an Israeli first strike to take out any Iranian nuclear capabilities, in your opinion? Uh, well, we don't know for sure what's going to be, but I, I, I think that the only way that the Iranians are going to be stopped in their nuclear race is by having a lightning strike on, the, on their yeah. nuclear facilities. They've made it very clear. They're, they're just uh, playing in these negotiations. They, they have the Americans and the, and the French and Great Britain and Russia and, and, and the others on, on a, a string, um, like marionettes. I think only a military strike will stop them. And I want to get that straight. Military strike, you're not necessar necessarily calling it a nuclear strike, correct? That is correct. I okay. want to clarify that with less than a half minute remaining. David Rubin, prolific author. We have a picture of your new book, the cover up, Peace for Peace, P-E-A-C-E. -E. David, we appreciate your time and perspective here today on America's Forum. Now we want to hear what you have well, to thank say. You. Thank you, sir. Tweet us your remarks at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum. We're coming back. Stay with us.